Thank, thanks there, Debbie, and uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, as the Alliances Manager here at HSO, I'm very, very happy to be able to hand over to you today um, the presentation by Sign Up Software, one of our key partners. Um, we'll be looking at the XFlow solution um, and in particular uh, invoice processing and how this can help both reduce costs, streamline your processes and also really help you understand and get full control over your purchases. We've got um, three great guys with us today. Um, you'll be meeting them throughout this call. We've got Graham, who is our, um, who is the UK MD um, for sign up. We'll be looking at Patrick's demo. He always does a fantastic demo, so keep your eyes out for that. But I think we're going to start with um, with Richard, who's our channel mark channel partner manager. So can I hand over to you there, Richard, please? That's great. Uh, thanks very much. Uh, and, uh, thank you for everyone for, for joining on today's uh, session. Yeah, we're delighted to be here uh, to talk to you and introduce you to uh, XFlow Solution from uh, Sign Up Software. So uh, as uh, Joe was quite right, said, I work as the uh, partner manager between uh, Sign Up Software and, and HSO. Just a quick introduction. Uh, for sign up software um, we've been um, operating in the dynamic space for over 20 years now and our you know our experience is, is fo solely focused on uh, ap automation uh, we have been working with over 2000 uh, customers um, working in the d365 ax through to fno space so well practiced uh, in helping our customers streamline their ap uh, processes some of the customers uh, we've worked with, um, just to name but a few, um, again, can range from small customers to uh, obviously the larger customers that have maybe higher requirements, but also global rollouts as well, going across different um, um, continents, which therefore might have different uh, legal requirements as well. So it's important to, to understand sort of the broader uh, requirements when it comes to AP automation. is isn't necessarily just the processing of invoice, it's making sure you have the compliance uh, in place, of which, again, we can offer some really good advice to your customers, um, to our customers, sorry, uh, in, in a best practice solution. So, yeah, just a brief slide as to you know why would a customer uh, or a D three six five finance user uh, consider something like XFlow? Well, XFlow is built on the foundations of D three six five. It's a, a it's a certified ISV solution, which means that you know we we make great efforts to ensure that we adhere to Microsoft philosophy of uh, Microsoft Evergreen or, or one version. So, you know, we're always making sure that we've got compatibility uh, even before you get the release uh, to yourselves. And that's what obviously one of big consideration when looking at uh, finance operations is, is making sure you've got a solution that lasts and, and XFlow is certainly one of those. Like I say, we've been offering XFlow for over 20 years now and um, we've, you know, learn a lot of things over the years, all the different clients that we work with, like I say, in different uh, continents, different geos, and that's, you know, allowed us to offer a really robust solution that can usually cater for lots of different scenarios because every customer is different. So it's important that we, you know, spend time with you as a customer, understand what your requirements are, but also share with with uh, you, our knowledge and expertise in, in how we can look to maximise your investment and, and streamline uh, your processes. So XFlow is extremely scalable in that, um, you know, you can use it for um, invoice capture in terms of uh, receiving pay PDF based invoices, or if you've got uh, invoice coming in via EDI or XML, you know, it, it's adaptable from that regard as to how you're receiving those invoices into your business and likewise it's very often the case that not all approvers are core finance uh, d365 finance users so you know how, how can they look to utilize the solution we have a great web platform which allows simple ease of use uh, approval um, of, of, the, of invoices um, which again can can be scaled out from 
sort of 10 users upwards quite, quite easily. In fact, we've got uh, customers with hundreds, uh, if not thousands of users that are part of that approval uh, process. So that's something that we'll, we'll touch on uh, today. We also want to show that you've got, and you, you know, you want peace of mind with uh, F, uh, any ISV solution. Um, and, you know, because we're built into D365, we follow the same security model uh, as, as D365, ensuring your uh, compliance uh, as well. So one thing I just want to touch on um, before I hand over to uh, to Patrick for the live demonstration is, you know, for those of you that sort of done your own research and looked uh, at the market that you know Microsoft themselves have, have recently introduced um, their own version of, of invoice capture and we've, we've not just done our own research but we've also had pro uh, feedback from customers that have carried out their own proof of concepts uh, as well and have immediately uh, come back to, to, to us to say that you know this, the solution just isn't uh, fit for purpose it's not ready yet uh, it, it it learns but then you have to reteach it again because it's it's forgotten and you know for for such a key process for a business um you know you just don't want that downtime or headache uh, to have to reteach or have the worry that something's going to go wrong and again having done this for 20 odd years that uh, you know this is very much a, a proven solution which again like microsoft has its own roadmap and you know will continue to uh, to, to uh, improve and, and progress as new features come out. So I'm not going to go through all these uh, points uh, t today, but uh, I've got them on the screen uh, at the very least for you to, to refer to. But the, the difference is that we can capture data at all levels and also apply logic at the different levels, not just at header, but also line level uh, as well. We also have the ability to um, custom um, or create um, specific uh, settings so that if you have a, a, a scenario whereby you've got uh, delivery charges, we can create additional lines um, on the invoice to better cater for the correct coding of those lines, which again, is just not something that's, that's possible within uh, the standard uh, Microsoft offering. The other uh, key function of something like uh, XFlow uh, versus um, standard Microsoft offering is the, uh, the, the ability to, to handle uh, repeat invoices that, that are often overhead invoices. So, for example, we, we refer to them as agreement invoices, and that could be something down to utility bill or a mobile phone uh, bill that received regularly and normally has uh, a nominal amount of, say, uh, £40 a month for a mobile phone bill. Well, if that's all within that tolerance of forty pounds, then you know why should that need to go through a lengthy approval process? However, if that agreement was ever exceeds say fifty or even sixty pounds, then you may think actually we do need approval process just for that scenario, and that could be put in place with the the Explos solution. But that is just one very basic uh, example that we can help uh, automate. Um, for you because again what you want in an automation is just that automation you don't want to have to intervene every single time and um, so you know it's all about exception handling uh, at the end of the day and xflow is fantastic at that so one of the customers that um, considered uh box of invoice capture but soon came back to us uh quite quite thankfully gave us this uh, quote to share with you uh today because for, again, from our own research and, and from, from others that we spoke to, if you only have purchase order invoices and they always match, um, then you know, Microsoft Invoice Capture might be sufficient. But if you're a real company, you need XFlow. And you know, I, I can't um, you know, stress the importance that in a real life business, you've got invoices of different quality, different scenarios that uh, you have, and you know, XFlow will cater for lots of different scenarios allowing to automate as, as much as you possibly can. So with that being said, uh, I'd like to introduce you all to uh, Patrick Tellen, who's going to uh, give you an overview of, of Explo today. Thanks, Patrick. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Richard. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, nice to meet you all. Uh, some of you uh, are already clients, I believe, uh, when I review the, uh, the list of attendees. Uh, but some of you have 
uh, have not yet signed up for for uh, for Xflow. So I'm looking forward to uh, engaging with you all. Um, just to set some, so we say, expectations. This is obviously I only have about 20 minutes. Uh, so this is not a training session or a, a, a proper demo either. This is really a sneak peek. Uh, that, that said, please do not hesitate to reach out to any of your uh, HSO contacts. And, and we're, we're more than happy to, uh, as Richard already said, uh, set up a sort of a more of a deep dive session. Uh, and you can uh, you do your proper due diligence of our product. Uh, so, uh, sneak peek of what Xflow really brings to the table. Uh, I will not do PowerPoint uh, or death by PowerPoint, but I have one slide that sort of gives you the Xflow on a page. So, what is the Xflow solution? What does it consist of? What are the components? And sort of what is the start, uh, the starting point of the process and the end point of the process? So we usually use this slide to, to give that very high level overview. Um, as Richard said, you receive invoices. You can receive them in different formats, different ways and different formats. Uh, usually, most common is still the PDF invoice that is being attached to an email. So in the upper left corner, you see how paper invoices and PDF invoices are being uh, received they would need to then go through the lower left corner, which is Xflow Data Capture. That's an OCR solution, and that is just a, a, a matter of, of extracting data off of the PDF image. And that really is uh, very much the uh, sort of the activity, the function that Microsoft Invoice Capture also has, which Richard uh, alerted to previously. But so the uh, PDF invoices need to be uh, processed in an OCR software. That's one before being processed into or pulled into the big orange box or orange or yellow, where they, that, that would represent your D365 solution. And inside your D365 solution, you have the Exco module where you will import the invoices, you will validate the relevant data. Is, the, is, is this a relevant or is this an active vendor? Uh, is the uh, bank account correct? Is the VAT number okay? Is it a duplicate invoice? Is it a valid purchase order? All those types of, of validations. It could be validations that are um, sort of, uh, it's your business rules. It could be VAT rules, it could be compliance, SOX compliance, it could be all types of validations, and you're in charge. Really important message is that Xflow extends standard D365, so all the validations and business rules that are in play uh, and in place in D365, they're also in play when you have Xflow. Xflow just extends, so you can you can have additional validation rules set up. Uh, it, it's uh, it's always tough to give examples, but of course we don't want to interfere. D three sixty five has the uh, ability to check duplicate invoices. Why would we reinvent the wheel? So that is already uh, uh, catered for by D three sixty five. Whereas we might have no P or no pay. Uh, uh, support so we can on on individual vendors we can set this vendor we will not process invoices unless it has apo and then we can create rules uh, for when there's an exception i want xflow to automatically execute something it could be reaching out to a person in the in the uh, uh, in the organization or simply reject the invoice uh, and that of course is up to you now, the invoice will then be processed inside D365. So you import, validate, you code the invoice. Coding can be on separate ledger accounts or, uh, or it's actually being referencing or, or connecting it to the appropriate purchase order. And then, invoice, uh, then the invoice will be submitted for approval. In that step, 
there's also matching happening. So if the invoice is automatically matched or automatic, it is within the tolerances that you stipulated, well, the invoice will just simply uh, be automatically approved and the final posting will happen. Now, if, it's a, if the matching happens and it's a price variance, a quantity variance or, or, or uh, just something that you've decided must be routed for approval, the invoice will be routed, will be available to people uh, inside the organization um, and they will be notified that they have invoices to approve and they just click on that link that they will receive uh, in an email and they will be routed to the appropriate, I guess I should say, uh, approval interface. So on this slide we see, so inside D365 we have the workspaces. So obviously we have a workspace available for, for approval of invoices. But then on top, in addition to that one, we also have what we refer to as the Xflow Cloud Approval Interface. Now that is, a, that is an add-on, but it is really, uh, it, it communicates an interface. So it uses the same data. There's always one single source of truth. So there's no synchronization or anything. The communication with the database is, is the same technology as the workspace has. It has. So it, it's just to enable a, an intuitive, nice, easy um, approval of invoices for uh, users that might not be too often inside D365 and they, uh, they, they perhaps um, regard the, the workspaces inside D365 as a bit Busy and a lot of information, not more, not, but it's not as user friendly. And especially if you want to approve invoices just using your thumb or on a smartphone, uh, the workspaces are perhaps not as, as, uh, uh, as optimal uh, for those people. Now, I want to leave this uh, image and, and jump into the solution uh, or the, the actual software. I just want to the two things before I leave it in the upper left corner going back. PDF, yes, of course, that needs to go through the OCR. But do not forget EDI and XML. And uh, maybe you don't have it today, but I will bet money you will have it tomorrow. So you need to think future proofing. So we already, and you, I hope that comes through on the slide. So EDI and XML invoices, they don't need to go through the OCR. They can be pulled into D365 directly and into the Xflow module inside D35 directly. And they will then just continue the process inside D35. That is a requirement. You will have that as a requirement also going forward. Uh, it, it's just a matter of, of when. That's one thing that I, I want to highlight. And then I also want to highlight the, the last box inside the yellow, which is analytics and insights. So people are always talking about automation, 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 but there are different angles to automation. You can have the touchless scenario. The invoices are coming in and no one touches it, touches the invoice and reviews the invoice. It just goes straight, straight through and it's available for payment. Absolutely, that's what we want to achieve. But we also need to have an automation tool that helps you achieve automation Analytics and insights are really our, based on our experience, these are the KPIs that you need to look into and the different angles. You have uh, your internal organization. Are you guys good at procuring things? Maybe that's where you have a, a couple of issues or it's your vendor relation. It's the vendors that are the problem or it's your internal business uh, that are just simply not approving invoice. Uh, or it's the AP team. Most commonly, it's not, in all honesty. But the AP team sits on the answers. And analytics and insights, we have it as part of the process because we need to sort of communicate that it's a feedback loop. Once you process invoices, you need to also commit and think about why aren't we achieving automation on these exceptions and then you need to, to address them. I just need to sort of, uh, automation is all, all about automation as such, 
a tool to help you get automated, and then also the third, a, a tool that you, because you will never achieve 100% automation, you will achieve, uh, you will have exceptions, and you will need to have a tool that can uh, also assist you, support you in the exceptions. Otherwise, you will just simply uh, uh, go down to net zero anyway, because you, you, you gain by automating, but you, then you lose by, by uh, uh, spending time on, on exceptions. Sorry. Uh, now, with only seven minutes to go, I, I'm jumping into the actual software. Uh, and we can see that Xflow then resides inside D365. It is its own module, and it has the same dispositioning uh, and menu grouping as any other module. So your users will jump between different modules and uh, seamlessly go into Xflow. Uh, and this also enables us to use uh, same data. So when and so same uh, naming conventions or when a user does a, do a drop down, for example, in in Xflow, the drop down, let's say that it's uh, selecting vendors or you're selecting VAT codes. It's the actual D365 uh, values and fields that we use. So on the slide, we had a, a horizontal process going from left to right. I'm now in the Xflow vendor invoice management workspace, which is where the uh, accounts payable or purchase ledger teams would normally sort of go in and start the day in the morning and see what kind of workload do we have. So we have, uh, in, and in this case, it's it, rather than having a horizontal process, you have a, a, a vertical. But really important is that this is the 360 view. The AP clerks, administrators always can have control. They are, are in charge. This is their kingdom. So invoices are coming in, waiting to be processed from the uh, OCR step and, and, and uh, XMLs. But then you have the pre-coding. So the invoices need to be coded, assigned, and submitted for approval. If there is an exception, it gets stuck. So let's just have a look at, we have an exception that happens to be assigned to me just by accident. It's not because I'm doing this demo, it was just by chance. And I can then look at this invoice, either I, either I can actually see straight off the bat, duplicate. Okay, that's something. I can also, just to be sort of, I can just click validate, and we can actually see matching details this invoice was already used on which date and it already exists so it really is all about capturing in these exceptions capturing the exceptions and obviously there will be a great deal of work for the ap team still to do if it's a duplicate we will not process it so it's up to the ap team to look into those issues so but we can see that the invoice has actually come in uh, it's been linked to the vendor, you have the invoice number, you have the dates, currencies, and so on. Not Nothing strange, honestly. And then it's being duplicate uh, or, or flagged as duplicate. But we can actually see that the invoice has been coded. It has been automatically coded by the system, by setting up uh, rules or by setting up uh, machine learning, which will actually uh, render in Xflow suggesting coding based on your historical invoices. We also say that approvers have been selected. So uh, immediately when the invoice comes in, Xflow will apply coding, will assign approvers that are appropriate, because, uh, and that really is your policy or your uh, um, delegation of authority that is no longer just a paper product, but it's actually enforced in the system. And of course, you can have different approvers on very granular uh, sort of details. If it's a quantity variance and the item group is this, then it should be looked into by this guy. If it's a price variance, it should go down uh, up through a, a, a signing limit hierarchy, for example. So, uh, but then, so th those exceptions will always uh, exist. 
but then invoices will also have been automatically. So without me needing to look at them, this is just the exceptions. I only need to, to work on the exceptions. But, and you really, you decide what an exception should be. Is it, uh, is it because no P or no pay, for example? But then you have, once the invoice have been processed through that first step, it just continues automatically into a workflow and they are becoming active and someone needs to look at them. I can see now that I have three active invoices. I can also see on the subtitles that one quantity variance, one price variance, and then a third of something else. I decide what kind of tiles that I want to have in my workspace. What kind of grouping would give me valuable information and would bring value in me, in my everyday life of working? I can now see that I click on a title, we can see that invoice status is active. So someone needs to do something. And this is where the AP team really can have the value of this, having the 360 view again. At always, at all times, at any given moment, just go in and see where's the invoice and who am I waiting on? Is there any commas? So we can look at one invoice. It's a coded invoice and I'm waiting for that, uh, that approver to do something. And then I have another invoice. I can see, oh, this is not just a regular cost invoice or expense invoice. This is actually a, a cost center uh, purchase order invoice and it has a price variance. Therefore, it has a completely different approval chain than the previous invoice had. We have a third one, which is uh, just to bring an example. This is a quantity variance. And I've decided if it's a quantity variance, it should be put on hold for a certain time because the system should automatically wait for a uh, receipting to do, to happen. So those are the three active invoices. And then I must, for the sake of it, also look at final posting invoices. And we can see exactly who has approved the invoices, when was it done, and, and by whom, and any comments that were made, and so on and so forth. Of course, we have the invoice image uh, available at all times. I'm rushing myself because now I see that it's 30. And I will then, this is the approval interface that we have um highlighted a couple of times and just reloading it this is then it's the same thing as approving the invoice inside a workspace inside d365 but uh whether you agree with me or not some uh of our clients the absolute majority of our clients argue that this is a more user-friendly interface uh, and they can, uh, all, all the information of why do I have the invoice here, uh, it's because it's a price variance. I can chat with friends and colleagues or the APT. I can add, add attachments and I can approve invoice. Once I approve an invoice, the next invoice comes up automatically and I can change the coding if I'm allowed to. And then I just, I'm just jumping around now and I just want to make sure that before you drop off, you get to see the analytics and insights. Of course, this is Power BI driven. So you guys, you know better than I do on how you uh, drill down into your data and you find out which vendors are we going, uh, are we uh, having successes with uh, and, and which uh, vendors should we really look into um, for, for uh, achieving a high level of automation or potentially uh, also who in the organization do we need to contact to uh, get the approval of uh, invoices uh, happening much quicker. So I've been jumping around very quickly and uh, I know it's now one, two minutes past. Yeah, so I hope that this really gave you the overview of Explo. Oh, thank you there, Patrick. Um, I understand, Graham, you just had a, a yeah, no, no, quick uh, minute, minute or yeah, two thank, as well, and then you. we'll go to some questions if that's okay. Yeah, yeah. I was just going to say, uh, obviously, that's a very uh, quick run through, and we would be uh, more than delighted uh, 
to run a, a more detailed session for anybody. Uh, or, or even if it's the case, we can come in and do a, a sort of uh, a much deeper dive and a full sort of session and come and spend time with you and develop, if need be, a sort of benefits case uh, for the use of XFlow. So, um, so as I said, whether it's a more detailed demo or whether it's an even, you know, a workshop to go in and really flush out the benefits, because the benefits can be hard benefits in terms of savings, but there's also a lot of let's call them sort of softer benefits, which are better tools to work with, and also um, the governance and, and the audit side of it as well. So, uh, if that's something uh, you think would uh, you would benefit from, just let us know. Thanks. Thanks, thanks, sir, Graham. I I definitely encourage anyone to take uh, take sign up on their offer regarding the um, the benefits assessment. I've seen it used sort of well with other customers, so it's a it's a good thing to good thing to use. So thank you. Thank you very much there, sort of Richard, Patrick and Graham. What I'd like to do is just open it up to the floor on questions, whether anybody's got any questions.